Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ryan Bijan, host of Cowtown Movie Classics, and The Force returns to Fort Worth with Star Wars in concert, The Empire Strikes Back. The last weekend in April, see the beloved second installment of the original Star Wars trilogy on the big screen at Bass Performance Hall, accompanied by the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra, performing one of John Williams' most powerful scores. Joining us tonight is Emmy Award-winning, Grammy-nominated conductor, and incredibly prolific and renowned music director, Miguel Harth Bedoya. As music director laureate of the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra, he returns to Bass Hall to conduct for this very special presentation. It truly is an honor sitting here with Miguel Harth Bedoya. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, Ryan. All right, so for people of a certain generation, a lot of their first exposure to classical music may have been the work of John Williams through these amazing film scores. Not only, of course, the Star Wars trilogy, films like Raiders of the Lost Ark, E.T., Superman the movie. There was certainly a hot streak there in the late 70s, early 80s. What was your first exposure to John Williams' music? Well, I was in Peru because I was born and raised in Lima. And I remember when Star Wars Episode Four, back here. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It came out a year later in Peru. All the movies would be, you know, always delayed for a long time. And, and they were dubbed in Spanish. So, you know, I was like nine years old or 10 years old. And I didn't hear the music that I do now back home. So that to me was an amazing musical experience as well as, you know, from the cinematography point of view. So it was life changing for me from from an aesthetic and artistic point of view. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of stored in the back of, of my mind, actually, probably in our hard drives. And it lived with me for a long time. So fast forward decades later, where we are now, and, you know, I continue the saga of, of the various films and the series. And I still find it a fascinating, you know, creation because you can't say it's just a movie i mean it's it's everything so anyway and to, to your question is there's only music and there's only orchestral music there's not such a thing as classical music or contemporary music there's just like duke ellington said there, there are two kinds of music good music and the other yes and i just find that you know orchestral music most of it is good music mm -hmm. And certainly John Williams is a king of orchestral music. And I just want to point out, you have this amazing poster behind you. You know John Williams. Oh, yes. You've worked with him in some capacity. That's correct. That's correct. I've, we've never worked directly together because we both are conductors. So you of can course, only have yeah. one conductor at a time. But but this poster here is from Tanglewood, which is the summer season of the Boston Symphony. And this is some years back. And so it happens that in the big, big marquee, you know, both... John and I were, were next to each other. Oh, wow. And yeah, we, we were conducting sort of days apart. This is now in 2010. So oh, it's wow. a long time ago. And then when I was music director of the Fort Worth Symphony, John Williams came to conduct one of our galas. And that was actually for his 75th anniversary. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah. So he's an amazing individual, very generous as well, and, and an amazing artist, you know performer, composer. It's probably one of the most versatile composers. And I think he's going to be remembered as one of the greatest composers of the 21st century, 2021st century, because he continues writing, you know, amazing music. I mean, the violin concerto he wrote for Annie Sophie Mutter is just a great orchestral work. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, absolutely. And obviously, you're quite renowned and prolific yourself. But, you know, as a colleague, as a conductor, who's done so many, so much amazing work across the country and across the world, when you're meeting him for the first time, does that take you back to being a child? Do you, do you kind of have to hold in the fanboy experience or what is what is that like? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But then you realize we all are mortals. We're just like normal people. I mean, you sit down in the lounge and just pick up a French fries and, you know, in the bench outside. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. So there's this stigma about certain artists that people think they or we are not humans and we're just like normal people i mean we do groceries and we you know wash the cars and we do stuff that you know people do you know in addition we we have a passion and a vocation that it's our profession mm -hmm. so it was nice to to meet people like like him and realize they were incredibly simple individuals with amazing you know gifts 
Oh, absolutely. Now, uh, you know, as a as a fan of cinema, as a fan of, of course, silent cinema, the tradition of playing live music with a film projected, I mean, this tradition goes back to the very dawn of the medium, of course, going back 100 years, when you would have either a piano accompaniment or an organ or an orchestra conducting with these amazing larger than life images. But the phenomenon of getting these, these more recent Hollywood blockbusters, it seems more fairly recent, like films like Star Wars or Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, making the rounds yes. with these orchestral scores. Yes, it's a fairly new endeavor. And I've done several ones. I, I remember when I was assistant at the New York Philharmonic, this is in the early 90s, that concept was starting. And the films way back were actually clips, only sections from Gone with the Wind, Wizard of Oz, Robin Hood, you know, with Earl Flynn. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and the like, Ben-Hur. Oh, yeah. I mean, and these are also massive orchestral scores, you know, yes. That, yes. that were produced for the Hollywood you know, studios. So it's I, I've actually seen the development of this literally little by little. And then, of course, with the advent of technology and digital versus analog, that whole thing has, you know, gone. And who knows how far it can continue going. So what you get in, in, a, in, in this particular presentation is that you get the film as such. But the music is extremely more powerful, I would say, because there is no way to recreate music. I suppose you can also say that about a screen, unless you are in it at the moment and only live, and you have no control over pausing or rewinding or fast forward, because that's the biggest difference I find when we watch a movie at home versus in the theater. In the theater, you cannot blink because it's gone. You can't go back, right? So mm -hmm. the experience of only forward is what's unique about live concerts or let's call it live movie theater. You have no control over the, the outcome or the output of the process, mm -hmm. right? So because at home, oh, I miss that. I can rewind. Well, when you're in a live setting, you cannot allow yourself to do that. So right. that's why these experiences are so unique and so engaging and so powerful. Absolutely. And as conductor, you are literally, you're the general of the army. And of course, in, in all music composition, timing is always very important. But what is the stress level like? Because I'm sure when you're conducting a standalone symphony or even with an opera where it's live and everyone's on the same page, you have a little bit more flexibility. But what is the process? What is the mindset like when this one, because when you're doing a film, like you said, you can't pause and rewind. It's all about hitting those iconic beats. So uh, what, yes. kind of pressure, what kind of pressure does that put on the orchestra? Well, on the orchestra, none. All the pressure is on me because what I see in the score and in my screen are a series of streamers mm -hmm. that I have to meet, literally, because the music is composed to the action. And particularly in the battle scenes or flying scenes in Star Wars, you have to be like spot on with every you know, moment by this fraction of a second. Mm -hmm. So that means that my hand activity has to be timed accordingly so that the music can meet a particular you know, effect or, or entrance of a character or, or, or everything that is being given to me. Mm -hmm. So on that line, and just a little bit of a sidetrack, one of the hardest scores I did in similar fashion, meaning live music to the movie was singing in the rain because yeah. the coordination was not only about elements but it was about song and dance that you have to accompany and that was so incredibly hard and the score by Gershwin was already you know hard enough so but those are the the projects that that excite me you know they challenge me to to surpass where I where I am and where I have been. I always want to, like an athlete, I want to be better than my last performance, which is not always you know, literally possible, but that's how I keep my uh, my marks on, on where I am. And I mean, the orchestra has to trust me they, because they don't see the movie. Mm -hmm. They just see me. They just see you know, you, yeah. I think only a few musicians in the front may, you know, occasionally look up and, and see the screen. And I'm sure even with you, there's a temptation. You're looking at the screen. I'm sure you, you kind of get sucked into the action and what's happening. And it's like, oh, wait a second. I'm here to do a job. I have to be ahead of it. Yes. But the good thing about this particular movie is that I've seen them so many times. I mean, I can almost recite 
phrase by phrase mm -hmm. and, and the music the same, you know? So, but there was an interesting factor about this, movies uh, episode five well four five and six the, when i was music director of the forward symphony they came out as such you know as, as such mm -hmm. project and i could never coordinate them with us for dates or this or they were booked in dallas and whatever it was so i finished my tenure after 20 years and didn't do any of them just okay that's life mm -hmm. so a couple of years ago i get a call from the from the forward symphony and so my former colleague was still working there. And, and she says, we are getting episodes four, five, and six, you know, over three years. Do you want to do that? And I said, you bet I want to do that. I mean, I've been waiting you know, almost, you know, so long. And so this is what I'm doing with the Forward Symphony. It's, it's almost like a selfish special project because people don't see me conduct, you know, a, a concert. But I think the genre is so amazing and the scores are so great that I... I'm enjoying very much. So I'll be I'll be back next year for episode six. Oh, that's wonderful. So that I'll get the, that, that, that trilogy. Mm -hmm. the, the original trilogy. So I'm curious too. Obviously, rehearsal is key in any type of performance. And I'm and you have obviously a lot of other irons in the fire kind of happening around the same time. So what's the rehearsal pro process like for one of these film screenings? Well, the movie is presented in two parts. So there'll be an intermission somewhere there. Mm -hmm. And one rehearsal for part one and one rehearsal for part two. That's it. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, that's it. Because everybody has to come prepared. So I have my scores for preparation. I have the the videos and the files. I have them all available so I can I can prepare accordingly. And yeah, basically one long rehearsal for one movie. That's it. Mm -hmm. We're oh, at yeah. that level of e efficiency. Oh, yes, of course. And, and, you know, as you said, this music, it's so ubiquitous. It's part of our culture. And this is almost so, sort of funny. We almost take it for granted. A lot of people don't realize that iconic Imperial March, the Darth Vader theme, it's not in the original Star Wars. It makes its first appearance in the Empire Strikes Back. Appearance in this one. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Do you have a favorite piece of music from the trilogy or from this film in particular? Oh, that's, uh, that's a tough question because I always have to choose my favorite music as it's happening because yeah. there's the next one is, I mean, all of them, I mean, even Yoda's theme or Princess Leia's theme or the coronation, oh, yeah, it just goes on and on and on. And and by the way, that's an amazing talent by John Williams to keep the listener always enchanted. And there's more and there's mm -hmm. more. And just in case there's this from the back and I'm bringing it back to the present just for a little bit, you know, to give you a hint of the future. I think the timing of his, of his melodies are just uh, imp impressive. And of course, I mean, let's not forget that his collaboration with Steven Spielberg is what made this also happening. I mean, if you go back to Jaws, yes. right? The first collaboration they had in which when John Williams told by him, showed Steven Spielberg his idea of a theme for Jaws, like da da. Da, da. And Spielberg said, that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. And mm -hmm. it went from that to become one of the greatest motifs, you know, that will hunt any anybody, you know, with Invisible Shark. And, and yeah, so I think both of them helped each other consciously or unconsciously to, to grow who they became. And obviously, each composer has their very own distinctive style. But when you're conducting something like this, do you recall in your head, because, you know, you've performed all of the greats. A lot of people say, you know, John Williams was very much inspired by Wagner, all right? Is there another classical or at least symphonic composer you would compare his work to? Well, he has quoted Mahler, too. You know, oh, the, the right, scoring, right. the scoring, you know, the scoring of, with the brass. And so, so who knows? I mean, composers need to know composers' music, all of them from forever. You know, every composer in the history of humanity has learned to know other people's music. Now, whether they like it, dislike it, they get inspired or put off, that's personal. So who knows how much of other composers are in any other composers, you know, either imagination or in their real compositional styles. When I listen, even in a vacuum, if I listen to like a few seconds of a John Williams score, to me, it's immediately recognizable. It's like, okay, oh, John yes. probably scored this. This is probably, you know, from his mind. Yeah. It's very unique. 
Yeah, and also they are so different. I mean, catch me if you can. I mean, look, at that score is nothing to do with any of the other, you know, scores that we would say, oh, this is, you know, Indiana Jones type music, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah, he he's, goes... He's, he's, he's special. Yeah, well, he goes above and beyond. It's interesting. A few years ago, I was at a sc an anniversary screening of E.T. And, you know, it's, it's a wonderful family film. It's great. But, you know, you're watching it, and his score is so... He goes the extra mile. To me, the score is even better than the film itself. All the detail, the minutiae, yeah. the strings. And it's like, it's just kids walking around the woods. It shouldn't be as powerful as it is, but his right. music really elevates the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's genius. I mean, we mm -hmm. have really a genius among us. Oh, no, absolutely. And one thing about film composition, you know, when you're watching a movie and say there's sequels and they make a franchise and they keep making them, a lot of times there's diminishing returns. The quality certainly dips. But what's fascinating about music as an art form is that the composer, he, you know, say like in the first installment in, in a Star Wars episode four, A New Hope, he kind of sets the tone. But it's it's almost the opposite because it's like the score he builds upon it. He's able to grow these ideas and explore these ideas with subsequent installments. That's Wagner amplified mm -hmm. in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And again, we don't know who's triggering who. Is the 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 script, the image, the music, and and that's a process that very few people can do it incredibly well. And John Williams is one of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, absolutely. So, uh, you know, if you're like me and you've seen The Empire Strikes Back probably over 100 times, what does your audience have to look forward to if, there's, if this is their first time seeing a Star Wars in concert? Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't give up a thing. Just yeah. get ready to be taken away and uh -huh. let the power of music, of live music, because live music doesn't sound like anything else through speakers or AirPods or... It doesn't. So let the music enhance the experience of the film because that's really what, what this is. You can have you know, the best digital, you know, when, when there's Dolby sound and et cetera, et cetera. But when you have the music hitting you like from everywhere, that's, that's one of a kind. Bass Hall is one of the best performance venues in the country, if not beyond. So there's nothing nothing to to find why not to go to Bass Hall to hear. Oh, absolutely. This. And of course, the design of Bass Hall, even though it was built around 1998, I believe, you know, it recalls mm -hmm. those amazing, those movie palaces, those amazing stages of the early, late 19th century, early 20th century. So in a lot of ways, you're yep. seeing Star Wars in the way that maybe the early 1930s audiences would have seen something like Gone with the Wind in an amazing movie palace. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. It gives some that sense of tradition with a sense of modernity absolutely so is there anything else you're working on right now you want the audience to know about a couple of days before i i conduct star wars literally on april the 23rd which is a tuesday before star wars i will be bringing to bass hall the baylor symphony orchestra it's the first time that you know where i'm professor of conducting and director of orchestras we are bringing my new home to my old home in a program that includes, you know, pictures at an exhibition and Laval's. And so I would like, you know, for people to know that I'll be in the hall twice that week, one for a symphonic program. And then there could be a good buildup coming here in orchestral concert. And then a few days later, you know, come in Star Wars. By the way, the tickets for the Baylor Symphony are only $20 anywhere in the house. And, and the idea is to try to get younger people to, to just to witness young people playing, you know, amazing symphonic repertoire. So since you ask, I'm going to be basically camping at Bass Hall that week. Oh, absolutely. And then the Baylor performance, is that just one day? One day, one day only. Tuesday, okay. April 23rd at 7 p.m. Tuesday, April 23rd. And we can get the tickets on Fort Worth Symphony or is it Bass Hall? No, no, it? Bass Hall. Bass Hall. Bass Hall. Yeah, Bass Hall. You just go basshall.com, calendar, they are there. All right, awesome. Well, I know I'm certainly looking forward to both events as a classical music fan. Do you have any closing thoughts on the film or just, you know, your career in general? What do you want the audience to know? What I want the audience to know is that there's nothing like music. In a world that we're in, music is the only thing that unites people, brings people together. 
brings up more conversations than anything else I can think of, you know? And when music happens and people are immersed by music, everything else is gone and forgotten. I mean, music is healing too. Music, music can be so many things. And I would never, never say it enough times that the power of music does change lives for the better. And you cannot touch music, but music can touch you. Oh, absolutely. Mr. Miguel Harth Bedoya, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, Ryan. Yeah, and if you're in the audience, we'll certainly see you at Bass Hall the last week in April. You can get those tickets at basshall.com or forwardsymphonyorchestra.org. Uh, once again, my name is Ryan Bijan. We'll see you next time.